So do you remember a scene from a big budget multi-star, a very ambitious movie where the actress is looking for a wife for her husband, a husband who loves her immensely. You know the reason why? Because she's been diagnosed with cancer. There is another movie, liked by most of, the, most of us, a young man enters the chamber of a doctor and very dramatically the doctor making some faces says, I wish you had come earlier. And the man is startled. He would say, how long do I have? Do you know the reason why? He was diagnosed with cancer. Well, the seniors in this uh, hall would relate to the last one. Another movie where the lead actor Rajesh Khanna was diagnosed with one of the rarest tumors, lymphosarcoma of intestine. And these are just a few to name. There have been a lot of movies where the word cancer equaled death. Is it really so? Good afternoon, children, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Virendra, and I don't write death sentences. I'm a cancer surgeon, and I prefer to cut and throw the disease out of the body. <laughs> While growing up, I was fortunate to be part of a joint family. I know what joint family does to you. Growing up with a lot of cousins, a uh, lot of relatives around you teaches a lot of life lessons which no school would teach you. I was very close to my grandparents. Uh, my grandfather, we used to very fondly call him Bausa, was very fond of me. Uh, and as you know, we had a large family. We had all sorts of engineers, lawyers, entrepreneurs, uh, IAS topper in our family. But then there was no doctor. And it was a dream of my grandfather, Bausa, that we should have at least one doctor in the family. And being the youngest one and most naughty probably, I thought, let me fulfill my grandfather's dream. By God's grace and uh, elders' blessings, I became one. While I was done with my MBBS, my Vausa was in his 90s. He was not keeping well. When the result of my postgraduate entrance examination was declared, I wanted first to be declared to my Vausa. He was on his bed, uh, waiting for the last moments. He was too ill to speak, to vocalize. With his hand gestures, he asked me to uh, hand over the slate and pencil, which he used to keep close to his bed. And when I handed over the slate, he writes those memorable words for me. He simply wrote, Danyavad. Those were his last words that he expressed. <laughs> Eight days later, he left for his heavenly abode. And those are the most memorable and most inspiring words for me. Ever since, every patient I treat is a reverence to him. It's been almost two decades now since I've been dealing with this so-called dreadly disease. Mm. If I may ask, have you ever been touched by cancer? Or do you know someone who has been touched with the cancer? I would raise my hand. I have three members in my family, fortunately all with favorable outcomes. But the unfortunate part here is, since the incidence of this disease is growing up every day, in coming years, we would see almost all the hands raised up. WHO has predicted that by 2025, every household will have one cancer patient. Isn't it alarming? So what really causes cancers? They are broadly, we can divide in two uh, categories. One is genetics, and another one is environmental factors which we can influence. Genetics, probably we cannot. Hardly 5 to 10% of the patients are genetic influence. If you see, I have just uh, pointed out this slide. These are the number of deaths by risk factor. Uh, these data are from 2017. Didn't change much in a couple of years. High blood pressure, 10.4 million deaths. Smoking, 7.1 million deaths. And if you see the whole list, Majority of the factors are our poor dietary habits and our poor lifestyle. Sedentary lifestyle, lack of activity, diets lacking in fruits, and a lot of other things. If a first grader would see this slide, he would very you know, convincingly say, don't you think if we stop smoking, we can prevent 7.1 million people from dying? 
And if you calculate all these numbers, if we change our lifestyles, if I change our dietary patterns, probably in coming years, we can prevent a lot of deaths from happening. US realized it long ago. In last four decades, they, when they started campaigns against smoking, for the first time, there is one cancer whose incidence has come down. Every cancer we are seeing, they, the numbers are going up. But in America, recently released data says that the number of lung cancers have gone down thanks to the campaigns against smoking. Not many people are opting. When I visit US often, initially we would see young children smoking and taking pride on it. But now nobody promotes it. So this is what awareness does to it. Now the first thing comes to our mind when a diagnosis of cancer is disclosed. It is identified by fear, trauma, or death. Mostly patients will be in shock. Some are in utter uh, uh, denial, why me? How can it happen to me? Uh, some are in uh, self-pity. Why did it happen to me? I never smoked. I never uh, did drug. I have all good habits you can expect out of a person. Just like that happened in the Munabai picture. But there are some risk factors which we can modulate and reduce our risk of uh, procuring this disease. One most important thing uh, in preventing this disease is awareness. Spreading awareness is one of the most important thing in my mind that we can help the society to get rid of this dreadly disease. Life expectancy in India a couple of decades ago, if we think, was somewhere around 40. Today it is 69. Thanks to the improved hygiene, improved sanitation, good governance, uh, health measures which are being taken, improved nutrition in the schools. Uh, but nothing much has changed in the mindset of the people. Cancer used to be nowhere featured in the list of top leading causes a couple of decades ago. Still it is not. Heart diseases and respiratory diseases lead the list of top causes of death in India. But do we label a patient with heart disease or respiratory disease to be given a death sentence? No, we do not. Then why demonize cancer only? If we find the cancer early, the chances that we can start the treatment at an early stage and give a longer life to the patients. In our country, more than 70% of the patients come in these stages of advanced stages, three or four. Conversely, in developed world, the figures are different. 70% of the patients, they present in very early stages, stage one or two. That's where the awareness makes the difference. The outcome of the treatment is different if you start treating a patient in stage one than a patient in a stage four disease. I will share a couple of incidences with you, and you can judge by yourself what impact awareness and knowledge about this disease and uh, the facts has on the outcome. As I said, I was very close to my grandparents. My grandmother used to take very keen interest in my profession. Whenever I would come from hospital, she would ask me, who did you consult today? And uh, what did you operate upon today? And I would very uh, enthusiastically tell her, oh, today was a very young patient, 13-year-old female who had very rare form of breast cancer. But I'm happy that I could get rid of her cancer. Today, I operated upon an 82-year-old uh, person who had presented with colon cancer, very desperate, but then happy with the treatment and the outcomes that he has got. I will show her some videos and probably make some sketches. When she was in her 90s, a uh, couple of years ago, I received a call from her. Very casually and calmly, she would say, Viru, I have noticed a lump in my breast, and I think it deserves your attention. I examine her, I biopsy the slump, and it turns out to be very early stage breast cancer. All she required was, was one single tablet, once a day, eight months, and she was cured of the disease. The lump had disappeared. On the star contrary, there is another uh, family. A family walks into my chamber, the lady in her 50s, husband, and a lawyer's son. The lady is aware of the lump in her breast for two years. She's been seeking different uh, consultations but not taking any treatment. That's what we call doctor shopping, probably. She comes to me, and 
Uh, obviously, my first question was, why did you not take any treatment so long? And you wouldn't believe they had very strong belief against biopsy, which is the most common myth that we uh, you know, see in our day-to-day -day practice. Everybody thinks that if you touch a cancer, it will spread. That's very prevalent myth, and it's a myth. Without biopsying, we do not know what type of cancer you have. We cannot make sure whether it is cancer or no. So biopsy is the first step in management of cancer. In spite of my 45 minutes of consultation, telling him all the pros and cons, what you, if you do not get a biopsy, then what all can happen. And by the time she came to me with the reports, her disease had already spread to her lung and liver. That means without touching, it had already spread to the other organs. But they were not ready to listen, and they still did not agree to get a biopsy done. And this thought really haunted me for two days. I was not at peace with myself. Why is, what's the root cause of this, uh, this myth so deep rooted in our society? And I could not come out with any single answer. What answer I think uh, in my mind is people who are cured of the disease, who have been successfully treated, should come out in the public and sp on speak about their journey through this so-called dreadly disease. Unless they tell, the, OK, I have been through this. I had this diagnosis. I was initially was shying away from meeting a doctor, telling everyone. But now it's been four years, five years, seven years. We have uh, patients who have been living for over a decade now. So unless they come in the society and tell the society that this is not the truth, if you treat the cancer at early stages, you can be cured. The mindset of the society will not change. Another very common uh, notion in the society is to keep it a secret. They would not talk about it. And it's a social taboo, probably in the rural background, if I talk about a lady who has uh, cervical cancer, let's say, initial stage, there would be bleeding or foul smelling discharge. Out of shyness, maybe social, uh, financial restrictions, God knows what, they would keep hiding it from their husband, their mother-in-laws, and they would not tell anyone in the family and near and dear ones. Unless the disease grows to such an extent that there is very foul smelling discharge that nobody can sit close to her, then the family members will bring her to the doctor's chamber had a person who has been through this disease spoke to 10 women in her society, in her village, that, OK, I had very slight bleeding. I went to a doctor. He examined me, found it to be very early stage cervix cancer. I'm cured for seven years now. Probably this lady who let her disease grow uh, would have seen us in a very early stage of the disease. It so happens just single member of the family would walk into our chamber, not sit on the chair, but come close to us, lean towards me and whisper, Sir, we have patient ko kuch nahi bataya, aap bhi kuch mat batana. Not knowing that I have very uh, big bore displaying cancer clinic, I don't know what makes them think that patient will not come to know. All around them, there will be patients talking about chemotherapy. There will be patient who has a surgery done, a lung coming out, gone through radiotherapy. But that's what they want to keep it a secret. If we spread positivity about it, positivity about it, I think that will do the uh, what is required for the society. Recently, uh, I had a patient from far east who had come to me. Probably one of her relatives were here and spoke some good things about me. She was a lady in her late 30s, diagnosed with a breast clump. And the moment she and her husband entered my clinic, I could see deep sense of fear. And again, that imminent sense of uh, death uh, written very profoundly on their faces. I explained everything that you, know, you need not worry about it. It's a small lump, and probably we will make you feel better within a couple of weeks' time. She underwent chemotherapy, and again, the most dreaded thing with chemotherapy, which again restricts patients to take chemotherapy, is loss of hair. Because that's the most visible effect, I would say, not side effect, uh, when women receive chemotherapy or their breast or ovarian cancers. She lost her hair. Uh, her lump regressed to tremendous sizes. We operated upon her. And the final reports were very favorable. So when we discussed 
disclosed all these uh, favorable things to her, and then it was time for her to go back to her hometown. That was the moment when she a little bit opened up to me, and uh, all throughout, she I could never see her smile or uh, read the fear still prevailing on her faces. So this time when she was about to go back and she opened up and raised some more concerns and she was worried about the regrowth of her hair. And instinctively I just say that just wait for six months and I'll get you an advertisement for shampoo. And that was the moment you know she opened up, I saw her not just smile and laugh at that point. And this is what makes us uh, feel better, makes us do the things even in, in spite of being surrounded by you know negative people, negative persons all the time who have been complaining about pain with us, when patient who walks in with pain and grief and walks out with a smile on their faces, that's the best thing uh, a doctor can give and that's the satisfaction which we cannot describe in words. How uh, there a lot has been done to spread cancer awareness in the world. There are marathons, Pinkathon is very known. There have been months allotted to cancer. Breast Cancer Awareness Month is one of the most uh, renowned uh, month which everybody celebrates. There have been rallies. But as I said, unless patients or the people whose outcome has been good speak in the society and spread the word, we will not be able to defeat it. Um, I would sum it up by saying that the most important thing in fighting with this so-called deadly disease is spread awareness. That will help us diagnose the cases at very early stages and give them a very good lifespan quality as well as quantity. Chemotherapy will make you lose hair but will save you also. It kills cancers more than hair. So don't spread negativity about chemotherapy and hair loss. Biopsy uh, does not help spread the cancer. It helps us formulate the treatment according to the guidelines for the particular disease. And to sum it up, cancer is not a sentence, it's a mere word. Thank you.